Hello, in this video series I'm going to be taking you through the development of a lion right from the modeling stages through to animation, all going well. Some parts will be in-depth tutorials, but most of it will be an overview with maybe some time lapse and a breakdown of how I've done things and basically the workflow that I go through to complete this contract. I'll also be talking about my interactions with the client and giving you as much detail as I can about dealing with clients and working on such a project. And by the end of it, we should have an animated lion, hopefully within some live jungle footage. So you'll be watching me with the highs and lows of this type of project. In this particular video, we're looking at sculpting the base shape of the lion and how I got the lion to this point. So to start with, I actually used a model I did already in Sculpt January, and that was a panther, as you can see here. So I'd already got this model, I'd actually rigged it, although I don't need the rig at the moment, so I'll hide that so you can see the model. And there was my starting point. It's always a great idea to use assets that you've already got, or if copyright allows, use assets that you can download. So that was the first stage for me, just pulling the file in and then starting to edit it. The next point was to bring in a background image, and that's very simple. You just click and drag it in, and it comes in as an empty, as you can see there, and you can adapt it, scale it, and move it around quite simply. Then I went into wireframe mode, and just started sculpting to pull the shape around to make sure that I was roughly in line with a lion's features and shape. This is something I hadn't done with my model in Sculpt January. I didn't want to kind of cheat in that sense. I wanted to practice form. It wasn't too far off a lion's shape, so I was quite happy with that. And I brought in a few lion models for the background just to check that they weren't sort of different sizes and so forth until I was happy with the shape that I got, which was this. Of course, it looks a bit odd at the moment because it's just matching the silhouette at the moment. It needs a lot of work. So I did a bit of work on the muscular structure, just very slightly thinking about the size of the paws, which are different from a panther. And certainly the face is starting to look a bit more lion-like, but not much. So I needed to see what it would look like with a sort of furry mane, which looks a bit crazy at the moment. But it is, again, just getting that idea of a silhouette. Whenever you're sculpting, get the silhouette, that basic outline first, and then you can start working on the details. If you start working on the details too early, you'll just end up rubbing them out when you try and adapt your full shape. And it's much harder to adapt the outline shape when you've got details in your mesh. I kept it on a resolution of 20, so constant detail of 20. Obviously this depends on the size of your object, but it's not particularly detailed as you can see here. I keep to a lower detail as I possibly can because it's much easier to edit the mesh. You can see me editing here, nice and easy, or if I wanted to pull anything around, it's fairly straightforward. If this was a complicated mesh with lots of detail, that would be far more difficult and it would get lots more blobbiness to it. So slowly the shape's starting to emerge. I keep checking with my reference images. I'll show you those now. So I've got lots of different lines, of course. And here's a nice white line, which is quite interesting because you can see the muscular structures a bit easier. So I've got sort of front form, side form, muscular structures from different places as well because they're sort of different models in different positions, anatomy pictures, realistic ones where I can see the anatomy more clearly, movement pictures which I'll come to later. This was sent through by the company, that's their current logo, so I know what sort of quality level I'm aiming for. These were very important to me, they're other people's sculptures because obviously getting this hair and doing a steel model of this fine hair is not going to work but when I saw this I thought that's possibly how I could get my mane to work and it's a very similar format some good stuff of the teeth here that other sculptors have done and it really is handy looking at how other people have managed the projects themselves and it gives you an idea of how to break down the form. I've looked at other people's artistic work as well and how they've broken down the face so I can build up the face in a similar way. Open mouths again, different postures. So uh, lots of details there to help me along. And you can see the form slowly starting to emerge. Looks a bit more like a sheep at the moment from the front, but we're slowly getting there. I decided to see what it would look like with a sort of metallic Metcap on to see how much detail I needed to put into different areas. 
And obviously this is only a very rough guide of what the final texture might look like, but it does slightly help me to know how much detail I need to go to in these areas, how blobby they're going to look, and you can see I'm sort of working a bit more on the detail of the mane and the muscular structure. And the face. The face is very important. Those are areas of real focus, so they'll probably need a bit more detail than the rest of the body. So still working on the muscular structure, a bit more form coming out. A common problem that beginners come across is that they put too much detail into the muscles and it looks unrealistic because they're using reference images such as these, which are very useful. But remember, that's not what a lion looks like. If I look at the muscular structure of a lion, it's very subtle. And often you'll see beginners go way too far to this sort of level. And in fact, you need to have that sort of subtlety. And it just should influence your form and not be your form. So very slowly again, just starting to build up the detail in the face. I was using 40 for the resolution so I've doubled the resolution in terms of the facial features but I haven't done much to the body so that's around 20. If I get my pipette you can see the detail levels in different areas. So at this point I was just 40 on the face just getting a bit more form. The face doesn't work fully at the moment because if a lion opens its mouth and sort of snarls and growls or whatever it is or roars even they tend to have more structure to their face that pulls the lips up, but I'll do that with things like shape keys later on. But I just want a sort of very standard expressionless position at the moment so I can animate it later. So slowly building up, the mane still needs a fair bit of work. So you can see I'm starting to thin out the mane in a way and add a bit more detail. I've done a bit more to the face and settling on the muscular structure a bit more. Finer detail in the hair I still haven't completely decided if this is the final result and how I'm going to definitely do the hair, but it's starting to look a lot more like a lion. And you can see what it looks like in its steel form. And you can see how tricky it can be to get out that detail. So it does depend on, of course, the reflection within the steel and how much detail I decide to put in the crevices, which I'll do with a cavity map. And it will depend a lot on the movement as to how it looks in the end but I think that's a sort of mane that I'm happy with. And then the last level, just adding a bit of detail on the teeth, a little bit more to the mane, and I think we're basically there with the detail level. Once I've retopologized, I will use a multi-resolution modifier to get back this detail and then maybe work just a touch more on it. But I'm fairly happy with how it's coming across at the moment. There's a fair bit more to do with the shading. I'm using cycles at the moment so I can get a shadow catcher on the floor, it's just a preference. I like to see how these things sit on the floor. The feet probably at the back need a tiny bit more work. And also it's likely that I'm going to end up rendering in cycles in the end. So it's a good idea to have an idea of the final composite. Just an idea. I do have an HDRI of a sort of foresty look in the background, which you can see there. So that will give me a rough idea of the type of texture that I'm going to need on the line. So that's the first stage for me. Halfway through this, I have had communication with the client. I've sent them this particular version and they seem very pleased at the moment with how things are going, which is a good sign. I'm now about to send them the more detailed version. Some of you may know that I'm slightly apprehensive about this project still, and I'm arranging with the client to pay me in installments to protect myself. Not that I don't distrust the client, but it's always a good idea to protect yourself in those terms. That way if the project fails for some reason I still get some payment or if they happen to change their minds I can come back with the suggestion that that will cost more and so on with those sort of tactics. The main thing for me when working with a client is good communication throughout, lots of progress reports, then you know it's not your fault if things change, it's down to them and therefore they ought to be paying you for that extra time if they do want to make changes. Okay so I'll keep you informed about how things are going, the next stage will be retopology so I will see you next time.